Welcome. Welcome to A Taste of Justice with Professor Angela May Kupenda. Now, if you believe in our Constitution, if you believe in learning and justice and freedom, then this series is for you. For informational purposes only, I'm a professor of law at Mississippi College School of Law, but all interpretations here are my own and are not to be ascribed to my school or to my students. This semester, I am teaching in person. Still, I wanted to give my students a little something extra. Now, I have posted longer videos on many of the topics we will, I will record about this semester, but I'm also doing some shorts on some selected topics. Let me tell you that with each video, I'm gonna to try to give you a little story about myself. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna give a few, and I'm hoping they will help you to connect in with some of the material. My first story though, I don't even know if it really connects, but I'm going to tell you. But look, I've been teaching for about 30 years in business schools and law schools. But even before then, I was teaching. When I was a little girl and we would go to the grocery store, after, before we put the canned goods away, my mother would let me play with them and I would pretend that the canned goods were my students and that I was teaching them. Look, my dad would come in and he would say, don't let that girl mess with the food. And my mom would say, watch her. She's pretending to be their teacher. Maybe this is her future or her destiny. <laughs> Now, how I'm tying that into state action, I don't quite get, maybe you do, but I'm hoping that uh, that story would just uh, break to ice a little bit for us as I start back reposting for the semester. Now, our constitution, and let me go back, the term of art for today is state action state action. It's a term of art. Now, our constitution, as you probably know, it establishes government and it limits government. The constitution provides for three co-equal branches of government, the legislative, the executive, and the federal courts. We're referring to the US Constitution. But it also provides that certain uh, powers are left for the states and certain rights are left for the individual, the solo individual standing all alone and no one else agrees with that individual that individual also has rights under the Constitution. So in my course, we start by looking at individual liberties, and then later in the semester, we will examine more closely the three co-equal branches of the government and also states' rights. Now, some state action is direct and obvious. A police officer in uniform on duty who causes some type of deprivation. That is state action, governmental action. It doesn't matter if it is a state or a county or a federal officer. The term of arts, the term state action is a term of art. A governor acting in her capacity who causes some deprivation. That 
is state action and on and on. So often state action is going to be direct and obvious. But the court has held that sometimes, sometimes the deprivation may come at the hands of a private person. The deprivation may be at the hands of a private person or private company, but the government may be pervasively entwined in that deprivation, such as to constitute state action. The court has said, we must sift. Look, have you ever baked and had like a sifter, you put your flour in, and you sift it to see what is left. You get to pure flour out and then there may be some, something left, maybe something impure is left. So the court said you must sift the fact pattern, weigh the circumstances to determine if what is left in the sifter, the non-obvious involvement of the government rises to the level of state action. Just think about it. It could be a political party that is indeed private, a private political party, but the court said, hmm, it may be exercising a public function and therefore it is state action and cannot deny groups from participating in that political party. It could be a private business that denies an individual access based on their race and gender or whatever. But that private business may be in a symbiotic relationship with the government, a joint participation endeavor with the government. And even though the private business is the one that closes that door on the person, the court says that is state action. It could be a group of neighbors who in their neighborhood make an agreement to deny um, that they will not sell their property to certain individuals. That's private action, but they then go to the courts to coerce a neighbor not to sell to someone they see as undesirable. The court said that full coercive power of government is state action. So hmm, state action is fascinating. In order to assert the constitutional violation, the general rule is there must be state action. The general rule. <laughs> there are some exceptions, right? There are some exceptions. So remember, this is a, a short. I am just getting geared up. But if you want to learn more about state action, I have three longer clips already posted from last year, going through state action very carefully. Look below in the text box and check out those clips to learn even more. Look, learning. Learning is on the path to enlightenment and enlightenment leads us to freedom and freedom to justice, or at least a taste of it. Look, subscribe and sign up for notifications. You don't want to miss a thing. Look, teaching my students is far more fun than when I was teaching the canned goods as a little girl. The canned goods did not speak back and talk back, but I assure you that my students do. <laughs> okay, you take care and I'll see you next time.